Okay, so in this video, what we're going to discuss is hemidesmosomes. Now, hemidesmosomes are a type of um, yeah, a type of cell attachment uh, that is seen uh, within the skin, basically. So, um, in the skin, um, oh dear, what's happened there? <laughs> that doesn't look great. And the mind, uh, in the skin, there are many layers of cells. So, the skin, the epidermis of the skin is made up of lots and lots of cells. It's uh, not just a single cell there, thick, it's made up of lots of them. However, what we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to talk about, uh, if I draw a picture, here is the basement membranes, which are just, for now, uh, denote by a uh, black uh, ribbon like this. This is the basement membrane here. And we are going to talk about the basal cell layer, which means uh, those cells which are actually attached to the basement membrane. So these cells here are the cells that are actually attached to the uh, cell membrane, uh, cell basement membrane rather. So I'll just give them all nuclei. And basically, what we're going to discuss is how, how are these uh, basal cell keratinocytes, as they're called. So, keratinocyte is just the name for a epidermal cell. And uh, these are in the basal cell there, so you might call them basal layer keratinocytes. Okay, and what we're going to discuss is how these basal layer keratinocytes are attached to this basement membrane. And they're attached, basically, by things called hemidesmosomes. So that's what we're going to discuss in this video. And we're building up to our discussion of the full-on skin, basically, or the epidermis, at least. Okay, uh, so um, firstly, let's recap the structure of the basement membrane, uh, because the hemidesmosomes are going to interact a lot with the basement membrane. So, the basement membrane, as, uh, as we saw in the uh, previous video, consists of two main layers. It consists of a basal layer, okay, I'll just bring this out, basal layer, uh, which can be divided into two portions. It can be divided into lamina lucida, uh, this top layer, which consists of laminin molecules, so I'll put a laminin molecule there, so this is lamina, laminin, this molecule here, and this is the lamina lucida, so under the electron microscope it appears less dense, okay, and then underneath is uh, lamina, um, lamina densa, uh, which uh, we drew green because it's got collagen type 6 in, uh, and we've agreed from now on that uh, we will show collagen uh, type 6 uh, fibrils, uh, or fibres, um, as green. So this is lamina densa, lamina densa, and it's made up of collagen type 6, so collagen 6 of these fibres here, collagen 6. And then the other portion of the basement membrane is another, me uh, another layer down here, uh, called um, the reticular the reticular layer, so the reticular layer down here, which uh, is made up of uh, collagen type three, which we um, drawn blue previously. So here is collagen type three fibers here. Okay, so there we have those collagen type three there, and then the two layers were joined. Uh, by uh, loads of uh, collagen type 7 fibrils, so an collagen type 7 anchoring fibrils, so these things here which we might draw like this, etc. Okay, those are um, collagen anch uh, anchoring, collagen 7 type 7 anchoring fibrils, so I'll just write that down, collagen type 7 anchoring fibrils, anchoring fibrils, and they join uh, the uh, basal layer up here, the, specifically the lamina densa down here, uh, to the uh, reticular layer below. And then it's not just these, uh, uh, these collagen type 7 anchoring fibrils, we also have, uh, we also have um, fibrillin uh, microfibrils, which are basically uh, loads of fibrillin molecules all joined together to make a, a kind of fibre like that, a microfibril as it's called. So this is a fibrillin microfibril here. The brillin microfibril. And I shouldn't have drawn it up there. That's where I need to draw the skin cell next. The brillin microfibril. That was a really bad move. Okay, right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a skin cell exactly where I've just ruined the picture by drawing that in. Um, I'm going to have to... What am I going to have to do? Um, damn. Uh, never mind, we're going to have to draw the, um, the, um, the hemidesmosome, which is going to connect this to this. Um, we're going to have to draw it in this little bit of space here, basically. 
Okay, so the um, this this is a uh, basal cell keratinocyte here. So this is one of these skin cells that sits on the basement membrane is, and is actually attached to the basement membrane. So this is a basal cell, uh, basal layer, if you like, a basal layer keratinocyte. And we'll talk about all the different layers of the skin, of the epidermis rather. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the different layers of the skin and of the epidermis, because the epidermis is a layer of the skin. But the epidermis itself is divided into uh, four different layers, and at parts of the body you have five layers, um, uh, specifically on the palms and the sole of the feet. Uh, but uh, for the moment we're just discussing uh, how these basal cells are uh, attached to this basement membrane. So we're just discussing the epidermis, and we're just discussing a single layer of the epidermis attached to the basement membrane, because that's the epithelium of the skin, the epidermis. Okay, so basal layer keratinocyte. Okay, so how is this attached to this basement membrane here? Well, basically, the basal uh, cell, basal layer keratinocyte, has a cytoskeleton, which I'll draw like this. So it's it's got loads and loads of keratin fibers within it, which are holding the cell together. So just like we have a skeleton, the cell has a has a sort of like rigid structure of pipes of um sort of uh, chains that hold the cell together and give it a structure. And this is um. These are called intermediate keratin filaments. So intermediate keratin filaments. Intermediate keratin filaments. Okay. So uh, one of the main uh, cytoskeletal components are, are keratin filaments. So keratin is um, a, uh, a cytoskeletal component that holds the cell together, basically. And the hemidesmosome is basically uh, going to be a link between this intermediate keratin filament, which forms the cytoskeleton, the main structure of uh, this uh, basal cell, and it's going to be a link between that cytoskeletal structure and uh, the uh, specifically the laminins of this um, basement membrane, basically. So there are two uh, two parts of the hemidesmosome. There are two uh, sort of connections. It's like uh, there's one connection and then there's a second connection, basically, that, that are uh, separate but related. They're both part of the hemidesmosome. Okay, so one of the uh, connections, one of the first ones we're going to discuss is uh, one that looks like this, basically. You have one component of it here and another component that just links in like that, and it links in and joins on to, these, um, to the uh, basal layer of this basement membrane. Right, and uh, this, this first component of it, the bit that remains cytoskeletal, the bit that, con the bit that connects with the keratin, the intermediate keratin filament, but rem is inside the cell. So it's basically uh, a protein attached to the keratin, uh, intermediate keratin filaments, and then has another protein connecting off it, which goes through the cell membrane and then into the basement membrane. This is called BPAG1. Now, what does that stand for? That stands for uh, bullous, bullous. Um, pemphigoid, bullous pemphigoid, which is a disease, a disease of the skin, bullous pemphigoid antigen 1, basically. Now, in the disease bullous pemphigoid, the disease bullous pemphigoid is an autoimmune disease, basically, and it, the immune system actually attacks this antigen here, bullous pemphigoid antigen 1, and that's why this is called bullous pemphigoid antigen 1. It's named after that disease bullous pemphigoid. Okay, uh, however, the, its role, it's not just, you know, a protein there that's involved in this pathology, it actually has a function being there, and its role is in this hemidesmosome structure. Okay, and this other one here is also an antigen, uh, an autoantigen in uh, bullous pemphigoid, so its name is, imaginatively, it's called bullous pemphigoid antigen 2, um, and similarly, it's often denoted uh, just by its initials, so BPAG2. So antigen 2, or for short, it will just be BPAG2, like that. So that's uh, bullous pemphigoid antigen 2, and that's part of the hemidesmosome. Now, um, another, another, that's one of the connections, basically, between the intermediate keratin filaments and the basement membrane, but there's a second uh, connection, basically. And uh, th in this connection, what you have is you have a molecule here called plectin, which is intracellular, and it sort of has a rod like that. It attaches to keratin back here, and it sort of extends out as a normal rod, and then it um, 
swells out like this, basically. Uh, so it has a swelling on the end. And that molecule is called plectin. Okay, so another molecule that attaches to the keratin intermediate filaments, which form this cytoskeleton, this molecule, uh, of the cell, rather, uh, is plectin. So plectin grabs onto the keratin intermediate filament. It's within the cell, so it's another great big protein attached to the keratin intermediate filaments. And its function is going to be then to grab onto other... Excuse me. It's going to grab onto other proteins, which are going to go through the cell membrane and then attach onto, in this case, laminin, basically. So the molecule it's going to attach onto is going to have, it's going to have a similar structure. It's going to have a rod and then a swelling on the end, and it's, the swelling is going to attach to um, this laminin molecule down here in the lamina lucida. And the name of this molecule is uh, beta-4, basically, the beta-4 integrin. Well, actually, the integrin is made up of two components. Um, and this is just one of the components. Then there's another component that doesn't attach to plectin. So, um, it just sits in the uh, membrane of the cell, and then it also is a rod with a swelling like that. So let me just highlight it. Uh, what colour should I use? I'll use this pink to denote this one here. So there's one. And that one doesn't attach to the plectin. Its, it's uh, tail end basically sits in the membrane, and it's uh, swelling at the... Um, or, or, or its peripheral swelling attaches to the laminin molecule in the lamina lucida. And then here, here is, um, here is the other molecule that, comp uh, that comprises this integrin here. So these two molecules together, this orange molecule and this pink molecule, are called the alpha-6 uh, beta-4 integrin, okay? So they are involved in the hemidesmosome structure, and they grab on, together they grab on to this laminin molecule in the lamina lucida. And the tail end of this beta-4 component, the orange component is beta-4, and the pink component is alpha-6. That's why it's called an alpha-6 beta-4 integrin, because it's made up of two subunits, this alpha-6 subunit, which is the pink bit, and this beta-4 subunit, which is the orange bit. And the orange bit goes through the cell membrane, and then attaches to the plectin molecule, and then the plectin molecule grabs onto the, inter uh, the intermediate keratin filaments, so that basically forms a link, um, a link between the cytoskeleton of this cell and the lamina lucida, the laminins in the lamina lucida of the basement membrane, and then you've got this other component of it, which is this alpha-6 component, which grabs onto the laminin, but then doesn't uh, grab onto plectin, which grabs onto keratin, instead it just sits in the uh, cell membrane. So that, overall, uh, this entire structure here, and I'll, I'll colour them all in, so another bit is uh, this bit here, which was the uh, bullous pemphigoid antigen 2, uh, which uh, grabs onto the bullous pemphigoid antigen 1 up here, which I'll do in blue here. Okay, so this antigen up here, the bullous pemphigoid antigen 1, uh, which then grabs onto the intermediate keratin filament. So they form one part of the hemidesmosome. They form one connection between the intermediate keratin filaments of the cytoskeleton of this cell and the basement membrane. And then this other link is the link of the plectin molecule, which grabs onto the intermediate filaments. And I need to give colour in plectin. We'll colour that one in green. So here's plectin, which grabs onto the intermediate keratin filaments. And then ke uh, the plectin molecule then grabs onto the beta-4 component of the alpha-6 beta-4 integrin. And the beta-4 component grabs an alpha-6 component, which is just floating around in the cell membrane. Together they form like a nice complex, and the head of that, the uh, lateral head of that, grabs onto a, a laminin molecule in the lamina lucida, and that there, that one there forms another connection. And together, both of these are known as a hemidesmosome, so a connection uh, between the cytoskeleton and uh, the basement membrane. And basically, that's what is holding your skin together. Um, and there's a number of diseases where these various proteins can get mutated, basically. Okay, uh, so that's that for this video. That's um, hemidesmosomes covered. In the next video, we'll go on to the more um, the the larger scale structure of the epidermis.